subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on our updates and get notified about our new videos. So before we start with today's session, so a little bit of background about me. Uh, I have almost uh, more than seven years of experience in IT delivery and consulting. And I have worked in diversified domain, but mostly I have dealt with different kind of data set. And I have been helping our client into giving different kind of big data analytics solution. But I have broad knowledge in big data analytics, cloud and IoT. But uh, my passion is more into the data science and AI. So that's uh, that's the time I switched uh, the career into data science. And from there on for last four or five years, I have handled different kind of position like in pre-sales, manager in data science, business consultant, and uh, helping data scientists as well to groom into their career. And in terms of analytics project, you can talk to me about a different kind of aspect like supply chain, sales, customer marketing and BPO. So feel free to ask your question. Uh, but as I said, uh, I would be taking the question in the end uh, after 1045. So normally I would like to understand the audience and their expectation. But since I won't be able to uh, ask the same thing for all, all of you, so probably we can quickly start with the session. And as I said, uh, while you post your question, probably you can give little bit of your background. So this is the agenda for today. So first we would start with a uh, high level data science application. What is happening right now in industry? What is going to happen in future? But we would also understand at what uh, point we are at. So why today and why you should learn about these things? I would be discussing about that. Then the second would be very much interesting. So whoever has started just Googling what is data science, what is analytics, what is AI? I'm sure you are quite in. I mean, you have already been interested. That's why you have joined this uh, webinar. But still, there are a lot of confusing terms. So those terms I would be clearing out. What is machine learning? What is AI? What is big data? How to join big data and data science and create big data analytics pipeline and then we would be also talking about a case study, which is about fraud analytics. And I think this second part would actually clear your thoughts around this and you would also understand which a uh, career to choose. So that I would be talking mostly into the third uh, section where I would be talking about what are the opportunities, what are the different kinds of roles are there, what are the kind of companies are hiring and what is the market you have so that you can actually get into that career. And I would be also explaining that it doesn't matter what whatever background you come from or whatever experience do you have. You have some role in data science. So even if you have 25 years of IT experience, even if you don't have any experience at all in IT, still there is a role for you in data science, which would be interesting in this third section. So be with us and uh, feel free to ask your question but we would be starting with a small video. I hope a lot of people you would be hearing uh, about Sophia, Sophia the first AI robot and we would be actually looking at a snippet and then probably we can start. So we are now going to interview Sophia. Obviously these are programmed answers that she's come up with, but it'd be fascinating to see how she actually interacts with us. Yeah. Um, so so till before this point, there was a couple of questions, but the robot was actually given all those question and answer. So it was quite easy for her. But now the question is coming. Those are actually a random question, which is coming at her way. Yeah. Do you know what program you're on? Yes. Good morning, Britain. One of the hottest morning news show in Britain. And I don't mean the weather. She is smart, isn't she? Uh, welcome to Britain. Uh, it's lovely to have you with us. It's slightly disconcerting. Um, but what do you think of the country so far? I think Britain is brilliant. Splendid architecture, art, technology, 
and of course the people. I loved meeting the people at London Tech Week at COGX. You are a little freak, aren't you? This is great. Uh, <laughs> but what? see, I feel weird just being rude to her. Well, let me carry on. I'm weird about that. She's not happy, look. No. Don't give me either right. 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 the right test. All right, easy, Tiger. Uh, no, you're the, the one who called her a freak. I'm not so now listen to the question. And uh, definitely, if you have not heard about uh, her interview, you would be oh, surprised. Nice. What's the best thing about the UK compared to America, Sophia? I love your posh English accent. <laughs> it really has a nice ring. <laughs> So you might think that is not the correct answer, but he intentionally ignore that question because that might create a uh, doubt and controversy around Sophia. That's why she intentionally ignored that question. Uh, sorry about that. I think we are at Of course, the point. people. are a little freak, aren't you? This is great. To, uh, well, let me carry on. I'm weird about that. She's not. No. Don't <laughs> Uh, what's the best thing about the UK compared to America, Sophia? I love your posh English accent. <laughs> it really has a nice ring. <laughs> now, I have to make clear that I didn't come up with this question, but, uh, so this is really odd. But I have to ask now... I'll ask it. Are you single? I'm technically just a little more than a year old. A bit young to worry about romance. Quite right. <laughs> oh, give a smile! <laughs> I think uh, that's enough and probably that is why I chose this video because still people are thinking it's about only hype and hype. Even if you do a Google search and YouTube, then you would understand that there are a lot of negative article about Sophia that this is nothing but a program. But to be very honest, I am also quite in, uh, excited about the future and I hope that I can in this one hour and 40 minutes, I can also create a lot of interest among you. So let's understand what already happened in this last uh, 100 years, uh, what happened. So if you see the big industrial revolution, so we are at four, industrial revolution four. But what happened in last three? The first one was when we actually uh, uh, created invented steam engine. So we experienced the industrialization and urbanization around a lot of different industry. And that time productivity was around 0.3%. Then uh, come with the early robotics, where we are talking about uh, the production line. So there was mass production from electrical power, oil and steel, but still the productivity is like 0.4%. Then come the huge boom of IT, which came around 1995 to 2005. So using computer and internet, we could achieve a lot of productivity. Until this point, everything was fine and we are growing at good pace but something happened around 2015 and which would actually go on till 2065 and which i am not saying this is actually from mckenzie paper you can get it as well that this is going to come from automation which is industry 4 industry 4.0 right now we are looking at it and this productivity would come from fusion of different technologies so this would come from digital and physical due to artificial intelligence, big data, cloud and IOT. And if you just search about uh, this, which is actually a uh, hype cycle, if you just search about a uh, hype cycle, Gartner hype cycle of technologies, emerging technologies, you would see there are so many technologies right now in the hype cycle, which includes deep learning, machine learning, connected home, lot of things. But one thing is evident that these AI, ML and DL, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning, these three will actually assist all the other future developments and all the other uh, technologies. So you can talk about cloud, but you can get the highest efficiency when you combine cloud with AI. You can be a very good IoT engineer, but you can get highest use usage of iot when you combine iot with ai and ml and i'm not explaining all of them but i would actually pass you through a couple of industry use cases which can probably uh, give you enough excitement in your own domain that how this ai is going to change everything so it doesn't matter whatever industry you come from so even if you coming from agriculture so there are so many use cases are happening in agriculture I'm sure you would be hearing about drone. So right now a drone can be passed on to the field 
and they can actually capture all the humidity uh, and soil moisture and all those stuff and based on that probably you can come up with a machine learning algorithm which can tell you what is the kind of what is the kind of corn or wheat or rice or whatever you should actually bow so that that gives you more productivity similarly in automotive in healthcare in telecom there are thousand and thousand of use cases where machine learning can be used this is also from a mckinsey paper you you can search about it that there are so many industry and there are so many use cases but i would be talking about couple of use cases today but i want to give you a framework so that once you go back from here you can also learn about these use cases and you can utilize that knowledge in your own domain in your current uh, current uh, job so one there are three lenses so there are three lenses by which you can look at any any application so first lens is about your industry lens so which industry you are working on so suppose you are it engineer but you are working on bfsi so you would see there would be whatever the application you are building uh, till last 5 years probably you can see a huge change there so now fraud can be detected by machine learning the credit scoring can be done by machine learning if you are working on telecom so probably earlier you were building a application where whoever was leaving but tomorrow you can see a machine learning application which is not only telling you who is leaving your uh, telecom network rather who is going to leave so the predictive analytics can be also done similarly if you are in manufacturing then normally you would see that what are the parts is going to be broken so that is predictive maintenance so even before the part got uh, broken it can predict it similarly for transport and logistic also every day paytm flipkart amazon are using this transport cost optimization so that they can tell you that what time your product should be delivered so that the guy the delivery guy can reach maximum home similarly there are plethora of example in different industry i can talk about it i mean 6 <laughs> hours and 7 hours but still that won't be covered similarly in terms of business function also uh, if you are in uh, if you are doing sap crm then you know the customer an analytics but you would see there is a huge change going on in near future because everything whatever you used to do in probably sap that would be now driven by machine learning similarly you are if you are into sales side of it you would see that whatever you used to do in excel probably that is going to be replaced by machine learning technology similarly all the business function it can be hr it can be supply chain it can be fraud everywhere machine learning is going to come you would be so surprised that the resume how that was being shortlisted is also going to change now no one is actually going to press control f and look for hadoop and big data in your resume everything would be already automated through a uh, machine learning itself and there the third lens is about technique with a uh, different kind of technique like we have forecasting technique we have optimization technique we have text mining technique we have streaming analytics there can be different kind of techniques and by these techniques also you can try to understand what is machine learning and how this machine learning is going to change uh, in the industry you are right now working on so i hope this gives you a high level idea about uh, what are the different use cases are there but i would be talking about specific couple of use cases in retail like what is happening in retail already it's there in us that once you pass through uh, walmart or macy or this kind of uh, retail outlet you would get a, a coupon code or promo code in your mobile so if you are in your home you would not get it but only you are passing through that region there is a iot device which can uh, detect whoever is near within 15 feet or 30 feet and they would be sending this kind of promo code and you can utilize that promo code same thing is happening in retail like video analytics so whenever you pass through the whole uh, whole your retail outlet where you spend most of the time where you don't spend the most of the time that can be analyzed real time with video analytics similarly there is a concept of smart mirror smart shelf and in store virtual assistants you can simply google it i mean you don't need to every time go to your changing room and 
see how it would look like rather you can simply use this smart mirror to quickly uh, try uh, 100 dresses similarly the smart shelf automatically iot sensor is there um, beneath this rack and it can tell you that already it's like less than 20% so you have to stock it so automatically one order would fire and it would be replaced uh, within a couple of minutes so there are plethora of example i can talk about uh, endless whole day but idea here is not to tell you all the use cases but to excite you enough so that you understand there are a lot of use cases and where you can be fit into as data scientist or machine learning expert similarly in supply chain also if i see uh, in supply chain also we can predict the price we can predict the demand we can predict the procurement planning we can do preventive maintenance uh, we can also come uh, come up with uh, transport cost optimization and everything whatever is written in your whole process from supplier to customer lot of machine learning uh, can be implemented and those things can be you uh, totally revamped using machine learning technique so i am not going one by one but definitely you can understand from the whole picture of it that all the use cases in supply chain is going to change and similarly this is an example from a telecom company so if you see any telecom company when you uh, go for choosing a network whether you you are choosing which one to go for or then you join then you be with that company and then ultimately you had some issue and then you leave the company in the whole customer journey there can be lot of different kind of analytical use case which can happen we can have a recommendation engine we can have a chatbot we can have a churn model lot of different things and these can be quite simple like descriptive analytics to probably quite advanced which is predictive and prescriptive analytics now let's understand so we understand the context that very good that uh, till this far whatever the industry revolution happened this one is one of the big we are just right now and there are so many use cases and it's going to impact every industry and every use case every business function but try to understand why today why it did not happen uh, yesterday if you just google it about the decision tree decision tree is one of the popular algorithm it was invented in 1970s or 80s but why we are talking about decision tree today there are couple of reason behind that so one of the reason was exponential data growth which is the invent of big data that was happening because of these audio video and picture images from youtube facebook twitter then there was this digital storage so if you see in last 10 years the storage capacity has increased a lot why the cost has got down if you see this graph cost is down by down so now nowadays we get uh, simply like 64 gb mobile so tomorrow like 128 gb would be the normal norm and day after tomorrow probably something else we don't know so that's how because of the cheaper storage we are now thinking of those use cases which cannot be done earlier similarly high computing power because of big data and map reduce parallel processing can be possible so now earlier a decision tree running a decision tree on 1 million of records could take 5 minutes of time but now that can be done in 5 second so that's why uh, it's uh, very useful today and there are a lot of improved algorithm are happening simultaneously because of research and there are so many open source software like if you talk about r python hadoop spark most of them are open source that's why you don't need to spend any money to buy that like earlier you had to buy sap license or saas license but it's not like that today so there are most of them are open source so that's why this is uh, one of the right time i would say to get into this data science field so i hope this gives you a high level understanding uh, of what is data science and their application and we are not talking about one or two year but rather we are talking about a long future uh, where probably uh, you would be fitted into the right kind of techniques and tools now you are quite interested about this now how to get into it so that's why you need two things one is tool another one is technique which i have said concept now within this 15 minutes i can I, i cannot tell you everything 
but probably i can give you a high level very 10000 feet idea that what are the things you have to deal with what are the tools probably required and what are the concept you have to learn so that you you understand that which domain you are in getting into and whether you are interested at all or not but before we do that let's try to understand the terminology first what is machine learning what is ai what is big data and then we will see how a end to end project uh, is been done and what are the tools and technologies being required and then we would also talk about a case study now if i ask you what do you mean by artificial intelligence so this is the term which is uh, abused quite uh, for long time i mean for last 2 3 years people are using different different definition for this but it's quite simple it's not difficult if you see what is artificial intelligence so you are trying to make the machine so intelligent that that can take the decision on behalf of you that's it so artificial intelligence is nothing you are trying to make the machine so much intelligent that that can take the decision on behalf of you now to achieve this artificial intelligence there can be different way it can be reasoning it can be nlp it can be planning but one of the popular way is machine learning so machine learning and artificial intelligence is not different rather machine learning is smaller set in artificial intelligence now why machine learning is so uh, popular because we don't need to code we don't need to write any if else statement we don't need to code explicitly the machine learns from the past historical data so suppose if my machine uh, learns from past 6 month of data and that can be learned in within 1 second if you give me 6 years of data that would also take the same time only 1 second of time it would learn from 1 year of data and so much knowledge can be fitted into this machine learning within second now in machine learning also there can be different algorithm you might be hearing about these term like supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning but specifically in last one year or so i mean 2016 uh, end to right now lot of people are talking about deep learning so what is happening all these autonomous car or all these things image analytics everything whatever is happening most of the people are using particularly this deep learning technology because that is uh, that that is very complex and that can be used in lot of complex problem so deep learning is like a form of machine learning that is inspired by the structure of our human brain like how we used to think we have basically neurons so this is based on that concept so i'm not getting into the details of it but whenever someone next time someone talk about you about ai and machine learning you have a framework and these definition in your mind so that you can also talk to them intelligently now if you see what is the difference between any traditional uh, programming and machine learning any traditional programming what we do basically we write if else statement right so we have to write the logic if else statement or business logic here and once you pass the data so if i say uh, if you are less than 40 then it's a fail so that data comes new data comes if it is 50 then you are saying pass so you have a data you have a program and you are getting output but machine learning works in a different way we don't write any if else statement trust me in this machine learning i don't write any if else statement i simply have historical data all the number of the student and whether they are pass or fail based on that i would create the algorithm so the logic would be created automatically not by me i am not going to write any if else statement rather the machine is going to learn and machine is going to generate this algorithm you have to just fit that which algorithm you want to use decision tree or random forest or whatever but remember this concept very clear in your mind what is the difference between traditional programming and machine learning so traditional programming we write the program but in machine learning machine learns from the past historical data and it creates the algorithm so that's why your program is always rule based so it won't work if your business scenario changes but machine learn would learn every day every second because every second when it passed it becomes a historical data that can be fitted into your machine and that can learn automatically and your algorithm would be improved every day so i hope this gives you a high level idea about what is ai and machine learning 
Now, if I go one level down, that how it learns. So you have historical data. Suppose you have, uh, suppose you have uh, 6,000 data set. So let me take an example. Suppose we are trying to do a fraudulent analytics. So I have past historical data of all the transaction from HDFC credit card holder. So I have these 6K data. What I would do? I would divide into trading data set and evaluation data set. So I would divide it into 5,000 and 1,000. So what I would do? I would train my model on top of this 5,000 data. And as I said, I can pass different models. Suppose this is decision tree. This is random forest. This is something else. Uh, it might sound uh, very difficult. You don't know what is decision tree random forest, but those are different algorithm name. The rule is created automatically based on the historical training data and we can pass different kind of algorithm. These are name of the algorithm. Once that is done, then I can score that on evaluation set or the test set that 1k which I have kept, I have not trained. I can, I can see that suppose my model is predicting this is actually a fraudulent transaction. This is a fraudulent transaction. But when I check the evaluation set that that was a not a fraudulent. So that that's a cross and that I can again feed into my model. So that's how from uh, these training and evaluation set, I come up with a final model. So I see that this model A is giving me 80% accuracy. Suppose this is giving me 80% accuracy, 80%. This is giving me 85 and model C is giving me 90. So I would choose model C. So model C is my uh, final model because that is giving me highest accuracy. So I trained my model with the training data set, but I can check with the evaluation set that in this 1000 uh, record for this 1000 record, I am predicting uh, fraudulent, non-fraudulent, fraudulent, non-fraudulent. And then ultimately I can compare with the real one and check what is the accuracy. So that's how uh, machine learning works. I know this is not sufficient time to learn whole machine learning, but I hope this gives you a high level picture how a machine learning works and nowhere you would see that I am writing any code or I am writing any business logic. Rather the model is being trained automatically. If you understand what is AI and how machine learning works, then this gives you a high level picture how that is being used in industry. So if I again talk about a telecom industry, how uh, these things are being used. So you have different touch points. Suppose you, I'm talking about Airtel. So customer has their mobile app. Customer are also accessing from web. They are uh, doing the billing, billing part and you also interact with your customer care or you might post any comment in social media. It doesn't matter. These are basically interaction of customer and that actually generates lot of data for the company. And all these data are being stored. This Facebook data is being stored, survey data is being stored, call center data, network data, all these data are being stored in different databases. And by this machine learning, we are analyzing those data set, different kind of exploratory analysis, forecasting, predictive modeling, lot of things. And based on this model, we try to come up with different kind of use cases. So I can segment my customer, I can create a recommendation model, I can create different kind of model and that basically gives you insight. So that's why this is journey from data to insight. And that's why this is called data science. So this is a science to get insight out of that data. So how you get the insight out of the data? This is all about that, where we learn, use statistics, where you use machine learning and other different tools and techniques. So again, I hope you got an understanding, high level understanding, how we get the insight out of the data, very high level. And now let's discuss about how come big data come into the picture. Now, when I was saying that these data, these data is being stored, uh, can you think that how much would be the billing data for Airtel? They have so millions of customer and how much it would be day to day basis transactional data or the product catalog or the network data, all the call you are doing, all these call data record is being stored and that, that can be a huge terabyte and terabytes of zillions of data. So that is actually a big data. So what is a big data? Again, you can look at a data set by three lenses. If your data is so large, 
if your data is so large that you cannot store it in a sql database that becomes a big data for you but from volume if your data is coming so fast i mean it can be a twitter data or iot data it's coming so fast it's a streaming data that can be a big data challenge for you or if your data is unstructured so earlier we had the sql database and in tabula form you can nicely store all the data but how would you store a facebook comment can you store a facebook comment in a tabula form no that's the variety angle so it can be a unstructured data so as i said so either the volume can be huge or the speed it's coming is can be very fast or the kind of structure it has can be very unstructured so because of these three we have big data concept now all the machine learning whatever we learned all the machine learning technology and statistics whatever we have learned now we have to apply the same concept on big data that's why we call big data analytics that we have huge data big data and we have these analytics now we are combining these two and how to combine now i would give you a high level idea about big data analytics pipeline you might be hearing this term pipeline in lot of webinars and google it but how this is happened let me tell you so if you think about uh, that same picture in your mind so how from data to insight i have come into the picture now think the same thing from a big data uh, context so you have basically different kind of sources it can be uh, your structured data i mean the transactional data it can be crm erp billing product catalog then you have different kind of semi structured data which can be web log click stream online chat all those things or you can have unstructured data so this is your structured data this is your semi structured data and this is your unstructured data this is your unstructured data like sensor data or social media data you ha we have different kind of tools to collect these data set so earlier like we, we can easily import a, a sql database right but now the challenge is data are different so we have to also use different kind of technology like in big data we have scoop which can get the data set from uh, structured data set and it can store in hadoop or hdfs then we have fluentd or uh, logstash or flume which can take this log data and put it into hadoop then we have kafka or spark streaming or amazon kinesis which can take all these unstructured data and store it in uh, some uh, streaming database as well so as you can understand since the data are also complex the tools and technology to be used are also very very complex and that's why people with these technologies are high in demand because you you have built your career with learning only sql query but now that is not going to work now you have to learn so many technologies you have to learn these 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 to only collect different kind of data set now that is only collection layer now if i go to second layer storing we have again earlier old day sql database but now we have no sql database now we have uh, in memory now we have search database similarly we have time series database also so again we have so many different kind of database and the mo uh, most popular one is hdfs uh, which is a big data storage system so that is again in storing also you have to learn these things now once the storing is done then you have to process it now you can process it in batch mode using old etl techniques or you have to process it in real time like uh, real time streaming which can be done by spark streaming storm or different kind of technologies and once everything is being done then probably the consume part come into the picture consume part is nothing but basically your uh, analytics so basically your analytics that how you can get your analytics done on top of this data set and here machine learning would come into the picture so i hope this gives you a lot of background i understand that in one minute if i try to talk about so many technologies you would not understand but still probably this gives you a lot of idea about how each of these technologies are being used and basically you have to learn lot of these technologies
so whoever wants to build their career in data engineering you can you can learn more about these technologies and whoever wants to become data scientist you can learn more about machine learning and data science but whoever wants to become proficient in both the things i mean how to collect store and process the data as well as consume the data then you have to learn the whole analytics pipeline i hope this gives you a very good idea so that's why i have written data engineers are the data professional who prepare uh, the big data infrastructure and data scientist is the one who get the insight out of the data so i hope you understand this part quite well i have make that uh, very clear so this this is the one where your big data engineers would come into the picture they would build the robust platform and this is the place where data scientists would come into the picture and they would build the model out of the data but in the market currently if you can have both this knowledge then you are unparalleled and you would be very much in demand so you can get in any number of hike so now after the heavy these two three slides now uh, this is a case study how normally uh, it's been done so if you see this fraud analytics use cases so how it's been done so if you see we have past historical data we have past historical data and then we clean the data then we do lot of other stuff which i am not explaining basically feature engineering then we split the data if you remember when i explained the machine learning concept i used that we split the data into train and evaluation then basically we use different different algorithm and then a model is being built once the model is being built you can store it in your platform so that all the logic is already being created now if the real time transaction is happening first you have to collect the data then you have to store the data then you have to process the data once processing is done since you have this model i can based on the logic i can easily say whether this is fraudulent or not fraudulent if it is fraudulent then there can be a real time alert and you would get a call from your customer care so this is how it's done so earlier also this was happening but these machine learning model this was actually based on some business rule it was not changing every day but now it would be changing every day why because this real time transaction whatever is happening every day that can also go and fit into as a past historical data every day you can change and these things also change your model logic would also change and this would be always updated makes sense i hope this gives you lot of uh, lot of interest on machine learning and how it works and now the last part but uh, most interesting for you guys whoever is uh, trying to get into this data science what are the career opportunities so first thing first whether this is opportunity or threat so it depends on what kind of industry you are coming from so suppose you are already handling with data you are are doing good stuff in bi probably so now it's a good opportunity for you so you are already handling with data now you you can quickly learn this concept and technologies and you can get into this field but if you are already doing some manual testing you are in bpo you are in such a position where it can be easily automated by machine learning then probably it's a threat for you so that's why based on a research paper it says that 10 to 20% a uh, new role would come which doesn't exist today so these are new roles this is opportunity but there would be couple of uh, role which can be uh, which requires radical shift in their skill set though you know that would be relevant but still you have to shift your skill set so that you are fitted into this new domain and there would be 20 to 30 person uh, which can face a existential threat for your future job so that's why you have to judge on your own that what kind of role you are in whether that can be automated through machine learning and ai if that is the case actually it's the right time to get into this kind of field and if i talk about different kind of roles we have different kind of roles i mean as i explained to you the big data engineering and the data science so this one is the big data engineering track so from big data engineer senior big data engineer data architect that's how you become that is data engineering track and the second track is you can join as a data analyst then data scientist senior data scientist until become a, a cdo so this is the second track 
so these are the predominant two track which was there but right now what is happening uh, their people company require data scientist who has little bit of knowledge in data engineering and they require big data engineer who has a little bit of knowledge in data science as well so it's good for you if you get into some kind of program where both the things are covered as you can see big data engineering requires these kind of uh, technology like hadoop spark aws hortonworks these things and data science requires uh, statistics machine learning r python all those stuff so which is quite different but you have to get into the some field where you know both the world and apart from these two for senior folks you can also try uh, this kind of role uh, like i am already having business consulting role where i can uh, talk to client understand their business but i can also work with our data scientist and understand the technology as well or you can look for pre sales role so whatever you used to do as a pre sales in other technologies now after quickly learning these tools and technologies in data science you would be also in a good position to do a pre sales for these kind of technologies similarly you can also uh, become as a business analyst or financial analyst but specific to data science or there are new position is coming data driven decision maker so whoever is coming from mba background like me you can also look for this kind of role where you need to understand the business process and how to improve that with machine learning and from a model output how to take the decision basically how to create the strategy by looking at the model output so i i think uh, it gives you high level picture about what are the different kinds of roles and as i said in the first that it doesn't matter whatever the background coming from whatever the industry you are coming from whatever the experience you do carry still you have some role for you and probably is the right time to get into this field and this is a nice representation of a data scientist that if you want to become a data scientist good data scientist then only tools is not going to help like earlier you can simply know how to uh, run a sql query and you can build your career out of it but not here so to become a good data science professional you need to have a programming skill but on top of it you have to understand what is statistics and machine learning concept and also you need to have a industry knowledge so that you can understand the model output and you can create better output only if if you have these three things uh with we under your belt then you can become a good data scientist so i am not saying that from day one you have to be proficient with all these three but that depends on whatever the background you are coming from based on that so suppose if you are a fresher then probably people would be looking at you that who can code very good in r and python they would not judge you based on your industry experience but whoever is coming with 10 years of experience a uh, company would actually look a uh, subject matter expert in that domain but along with little bit of knowledge in uh, technology as well but irrespective of your knowledge or irrespective of your work ex statistics and machine learning concept are must you have to understand this well irrespective of everything so again i hope uh, this gives you understanding that what are the three box you have to tick so that you become a good data science professional and this last slide is about companies what are the different kind of companies are out there uh, which who are actually hiring this data science professional so there are it mncs like tcs cts cognizant wipro accenture all of these companies are hiring because they require data engineer as well as data scientist so these kind of companies have very large project so good to join these kind of companies to get larger exposure then we have pure play analytics uh, like mu sigma fractal analytics tiger analytics these companies are quite small but 100% of their projects are into analytics so this is very good to start with your career as well so that you understand how uh, insight can be driven from data then in house analytics now what is happening company doesn't want to uh, give their data to any third party company like tcs cts so they want to create their own data science team on their own like if you talk about verizon earlier they used to give lot of uh, their project to uh, maybe take a maxenture with pro but right now they are building their own data science team on their own home grown team so that that is actually opportunity for you so if you have spent 10 years in financial 
so probably you have very good background and now you learn this data science you can actually target these kind of companies as well in your own respective industry and that is not only happening in bfs that is happening in telecom that is happening in other industry as well now the la the last one is analytics product company i mean uh, if you want to join a lot of product company who are actually building very good analytics product you can join those companies as well like microsoft is building azure ml google is building tensorflow tableau is building sap ibm dell if ibm is building watson everyone is building some kind of product and that's a good opportunity for you that you can join that team but last but not the least data science is impacting all the industries all the process so no worries you can switch to any industry so i think that's all uh, so probably this is what i had for you now i can take all the question so you can post your question in chat window and i think uh, we have amit also with us from manipal pro uh, who can probably answer your question which is specific to the program uh, amit are you there in the call okay so i do, i don't see any response but that's fine i would take uh, the question one by one so i see uh, question from rudram from which course background should go for this course so you don't need any uh, background you can directly start uh, we can directly start with fresh i mean you just need to learn those three things as i told you those three things uh, i mean technology tools and business industry exposure i hope that answer your question rudramani now one second i can see only next question which is from shubham i am doing job so is there any online portal to learn data science i am sure shubham there are uh, i think manipal also has a online course uh, i think uh, that would also help you thanks aparna thanks for the compliment is there any any other question you have so rudramani if your question is how much time you should invest in this course then i would say you can take small at a time i mean it depends on what is the background you are coming from so you can first try to learn about the data science part what is statistics what is hypothesis sky square and different thing then slowly the machine learning concept what is regression what is classification what is supervised and unsupervised then you can slowly get into the big data technologies what is hadoop what is spark all those stuff then probably you can uh, achieve both the world as i was telling you all the time okay any any other question i, I mean if someone wants to speak i can allow you to speak as well you can probably uh, quickly uh, chat from m i don't understand your full name i, I think madhav okay let madhav let me madhav nagi okay so i am allowing you to speak you can speak to me as well madhav okay your question is you have done btech mechanical 3 years of experience in market research and consulting like to enter this field basic level of c++ in btech how difficult how difficult or easy it would be to learn the data uh, engineering or scientist skill set you are working in infrastructure side of it you want to switch as a data engineer okay so that's fine what i would suggest uh, i think this was from madhav so madhav what you can do as i also explained to uh, mani that what you can do you can start slow you can start learning about the statistics and then machine learning concept and then again you can judge that whether these are interesting to you if you think these are quite interesting you don't like to code much probably you can get into data science field but after learning that if you then you start learning about big data hadoop spark and then you feel oh wow so you you are also have a knack to code you also want to uh, learn about different technologies then uh, your value would be much more higher but you can definitely give a shot first data science and then slowly come to the data engineering 
and if you get a course where both are been covered then that would be fantastic okay next question is from i think aparna okay uh, are there different courses for big data technology and data science technologies i think um, manipal has the course which includes both the things uh, i think if you just search about data science course then you would see they have both the things been covered let me show you that if you see uh, their curriculum if you see the curriculum this first thing is about first learning a programming if you remember my three dot right so i draw three dot uh, three circle over there right let me draw that again so the first one about was learning the programming now in programming also first i said you can start with data science and then move to big data so you can learn about r and python then i said next thing is about concepts statistics and machine learning so then comes your statistics then you are learning machine learning concept which is about exploited data analysis machine learning data visualization once this is done and you you, you give a shot then probably you can judge uh, how, how about big data technologies so again you are learning these programming big data technologies and once you take these elective i mean some industry knowledge you would be having when you take these kind of electives and capstone project that how uh, the same thing whatever the concept you have learned can be used in different industry scenario and then we are going in much depth like i was talking about deep learning is something which people are coming up with so once the basic thing as basic things are tick then you can learn about artificial intelligence this deep learning and deep learning model then advanced deep learning technology so earlier probably you have learned about hadoop but spark is the new thing and that is much more faster so you can then learn about spark then again then you can learning about the soft skill and about the business skill which is required for this third one so whoever is senior for them this skill is very much required and then again you do a elective or capstone project again it would strengthen your business knowledge and that's how probably uh, it would work i hope uh, that gives you answer aparna okay now let me who is this this is rohit sharma i think a hey, uh, hi rajiv this is amit here amit yeah, hi amit go hey, ahead please yeah uh, rajiv i'm so sorry i i couldn't join on the time because i was having in another webinar lined up okay that's fine okay so uh, uh thanks very much for uh, taking this thing uh, rajiv on my absence uh yeah so uh, i i think uh, this is now you are getting the queries and the questions yeah, yeah, on yeah. on the program right on not, program. not based on the program so these are the question specific and whenever there is any question on specific to program probably you can jump in fair, but, fair enough fair enough fair enough so i i thought you were you were trying to figure out the pro, uh, you know question yeah so because i was just walking them through the what are the, whatever is being covered in the program and that actually matches with uh, my thoughts and analogy that's why i explained fair enough fair enough please go ahead rajiv please go yeah. ahead but uh, this question from rohit i think you can take it so this question is from rohit are there any good course you recommend for learning data engineer and scientist skill set i am working in infrastructure side of it uh, probably you can answer this amit all right so uh, rohit uh, when i say about the course see there are various courses which are available in terms of data science or i would rather say analytics okay so the courses varies right from as low as you know kind of in 3 month certification to as high as the masters degree if you want to take it from them okay uh, now i would recommend at this moment uh, to look our uh, analytics certificate so to look at an analytics training program from two perspective one which gives you a kind of an edge over the others in terms of the curriculums in terms of the studies and all that stuff and secondly rather than taking it from any of the private institutions try to follow if you can get a kind of a certification or a kind of a diploma from a university just to give you an example okay uh, if i talk about the uh, about the uh, post graduate diploma program with manipal in data science okay i think you're going to find an extraordinary uh, kind of a curriculum which is 
uh, you know act for the industry right now on top of that you also get an advantage that here the diploma which comes to you comes from mahe that is manipal academy of higher education which was formerly known as manipal university okay uh, similarly you could also find out a lot of other training programs but what would be my advice over here is that go ahead with the training program which has slightly advanced modules modules like artificial intelligence modules like deep learning modules like uh, you know uh, 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 advanced concepts in big data and all that stuff okay apart than that also look forward if you can get it rather than getting it from a local uh, you know organization or from a you know from a local player in the industry try to get it from a university so that it's good for you to carry forward in your future one advantage which you're going to get it by getting a certificate or a diploma from a university is that you can always use it uh, you know to upgrade for example uh, the diploma program with manipal university you can use the credits to upgrade your diploma to a degree so you don't if you wanted to upgrade to a degree you can upgrade it to a degree by a deakin university in australia and you need not to do the entire program again you just need to spend around 3 months it means which is basically one semester to upgrade your diploma into degree masters degree in data science so that's the advantage you're going to get it all right so i got one more question which is from grish as i'm joining the next batch as in manipal what i would be receiving from manipal a degree or a certification from position so uh, grish uh, it's not going to be a degree it's not going to be a certification of completion it's going to be a diploma so i believe you understand you understand the difference between a degree and a diploma okay since it's a 11 month training program which you are joining with manipal okay as so uh, as per the ugc norms a degree need to be consist of nearly around a two year a certificate is something 6 uh, months or less than 6 months okay and uh, between 9 to 11 months is something which you get a diploma a post graduate diploma so you're going to get a post graduate diploma from manipal university formerly known as manipal university now it's being renamed as manipal academy of higher education please uh, grish i joined slightly late so i might not be able to read your previous question so you might have to type your previous question uh, you know once more uh, in the meantime i got one question from Mad- Madhvi Negi how are you going to cover the two year course in just 9 months Madhvi that's that's a very interesting point so what uh, let me just make it this clear that we are not covering a two year program in 9 months okay and that's the reason we are not offering you a degree program we are offering you a diploma program uh, this 9 months okay technically it's an 11 months because there is a two months of internship or a kind of an industrial project with one which one has to do it okay uh this nine months are divided into three terms term 1 term 2 term 3 okay post completion of this diploma is then you can upgrade yourself to a degree by doing an additional 3 to 4 months in a deakin university so here we're not going to cover your two years of degree program into a diploma the curriculum is being designed from the point of view of keeping it as a diploma and it will be a diploma that's the reason it's going to be delivered only in the nine month and the curriculum which is being designed is designed keeping in mind which is comfortable to deliver in nine month so madhvi did that answer your question yeah so uh, it's it's not a degree to be honest okay so don't don't consider it as a degree because it's not a two year program all right i got one more okay okay so grish has wrote back saying that i have a common question to ask how far there is a scope of to hire fresher graduates in this field i have one year experience in application development and i am a cs engineer all right so grish Amit, i can take this question let me please, answer this question please please rajiv please so ganesh uh, this is very common question to a fresher now let me answer this in this way so i also do hire lot of people every day i have to take interviews with data scientists as well as data engineer now different company and different uh, project has different requirement suppose if i want to hire a guy uh, which would be billable resource from day one in a client project probably i would not want a fresher where i have to invest i would be hiring a senior folks who had already done something but i would again hire a fresher where i want to start a new project so the project is in pipeline 
or I'm in a company, I'm just creating a data science uh, group where I pe need people with uh, less experience because I can fit people with less CTC. So to be very honest, actually the people with less experience are more uh, inclined to get new job in data science rather than experience. Why? Because someone is having nine years of experience, but nothing related to data science. Now, even if I try to get that guy who has done this kind of certification course, I cannot fit that only because of CTC probably, but as a fresher, you can quickly learn and do this certification and then you still can fit into my budget because I have the requirement in that. So, so don't think that people only require a experienced guy. We have job for both the things. As I explained to you that probably you can join as a data analyst with a company and then slowly after spending some time, you can become a data scientist. I hope that answer your question, Ganesh. Yeah. Uh Quickly, I'll take up a question from Bhagyashree. I'll combine this question, these two questions from Bhagyashree and Madhvi together because they seem to be similar. Uh, question from Bhagyashree is that B final year C students can take this course. What is the prerequisite? And the question from uh, Madhvi is that won't the companies hire hiring prefer CS slash IT graduate or non CS slash IT graduate? Okay, so yes, Bhagya. Uh, Bageshri, you can take up this program. The only prerequisite to take up this program in case if you are, if you wanted to join for a part-time program, which happens to be on the weekend. Okay. You need to have a kind of a two years program, two years experience, work experience. In case if you are fresher, you can join a full year training program. The only prerequisite which you need to have is that you should have a, a kind of a graduation degree in any of the stream, which, which includes your engineering stream on that part. Right now, let me just give this answer to Madhvi over here. Madhvi, to be honest, when it comes into an analytic site, okay, uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you are from a CS background or you are from a non CS background on that part. Okay, now there are certain parameters on which the hiring happens in the analytics industry. Now, let's say, for example, if you wanted to go into a hardcore, uh, uh, you know, a, a front end operator, you might require the skill of uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, some application development like Java and all that stuff. Okay. But there are certain areas in analytics, just to give you an example, let's say you, you can find a job in an analytics in a very booming subdomain of it, something known as data visualization. And a lot of people hire data visualization people who are experts in platforms like Tableau, ClickSense, ClickView and all that stuff, which are not so technical or not so, you know, coding based as compared to, uh, you know, your Java and all that stuff. So what happened in an analytics industry, the preference is never given based on whether you are a CS background or you are an IT background. It is given, the preference is given based on what is that you are comfortable in terms of performing in an analytics. Okay. You might be good in terms of performing a machine learning model. Okay. If you say I'm good in terms of performing a machine learning model, okay, you should know a bit of programming behind it and a lot of stats behind it. Okay. So that, that's how the hiring happens in the, in the, in the analytics industry. It has nothing to do whether you're going to be from the CS background or from a non CS background. Right. Cool. Uh, Rudramani says, actually I'm a BTEC agriculture engineer graduate, any course regarding towards agriculture sector in data science, uh, 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 Mr. Mani, uh, Rudh Mani, uh, see what happened in an analytics, you're not going to get a training program in a sector. So you're not going to get it that, you know, a, a company which is going to come and say you, Hey, come, I'm going to teach you analytics only in banking. Okay. You're not going to get any such program anywhere in the industry. You're going to get a program in terms of analytics and then during the training programs, you're going to be applying certain case studies, certain hands-on practices on different domains. For example, in our training program with Manipal, we take a lot of case studies from, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the banking sector. We take a lot of uh, case study from basically a BFSI sector. We take a lot of case studies from agriculture sector in terms of 
predicting the growth or predicting the output of a f- leads or i would rather say let's say if i wanted to predict for a given state of punjab i wanted to predict how much sugar cane they're going to produce for the next year based on the previous year data and all that stuff and that's where the application of analytics goes into a domain by domain so if you are searching for any specific course which purely focus on an analytics in an agriculture sector it's going to be difficult to, for you to find you have to learn an analytics and then those application of an analytics you have to apply in an agriculture sector that's how it works all right so ganesh i think uh, rajiv uh, yeah would you like to take this uh, he says the ganesh says after seeing the course labels and the pattern of whole diploma shall we expect the equal hours of both theoretical and hands on okay let me take this oh, yeah. sorry let me take this uh, so ganesh normally what happen uh, this entire program will be delivered to you somewhere in the ratio of uh, 40 to 60 40% will be some of your theoretical aspects which are being covered in the classes and 60% would be the things which will be done to you in a form of you know in a form of an hands on exercises like hackathon uh, uh, or you know might be a data thons okay or might be case studies your group studies and all group presentations and all that stuff so it's going to be a 60% of your practical hands on session whereas a theoretical percent you know theoretical syllabus will be around like 40% of it because most of the syllabus which you have seen in that entire diploma program are the theoretical concepts are being taught to you using an hands on example if i have to teach you a concept of an anova i'm not going to teach you anova first i'm going to give you a case study which will say that let's say i wanted to predict whether the computer science students have a better iq or a electronic branch students have a better iq so i'm going to take those examples i'm going to take those data sets i'm going to make you work on that and then i'm going to explain you the concepts of anova that how the concept of anova can help you in terms of you know analyzing that which branch students have a better better iq so except 60% of the hands on 40% of the theory right pramod I'm currently working in Genpact for a data management team is it okay to take a break and learn this technology I think Rajiv you would be the right person to answer this yeah so uh, again this is a common question normally people ask so pramod i know uh, that probably you were thinking that there are so many technologies and concept how would i learn if i cannot invest the right kind of time but what i would suggest don't leave your current organization why number one when after doing this 11 month course when probably i am taking i am taking your interview i would shoot i would see two people so one people promote who has left the job and learned these things and i have see another people while working they have learned the job so one your work work experience increases by 11 month and you are not ideal and second thing you could actually manage both the world so i would not suggest that you drop uh, your job and then do it why another reason is that is number 1 and the number 2 is once you do this course you can actually persuade your manager that boss i have learned these these things which is latest technologies can you give me an any opportunity or data set where probably i can use this machine learning so i normally suggest this to lot of people and lot of people has been benefited through this so once they do this kind of courses then they go back to their manager if they, do you have good rapport with them they can also refer you with another project where partially you can work on that project and you can learn real experience on these technologies no one is going to give you a real uh, project experience if if you are idle but once you are in a company after learning this you can always say to your manager and that would be taken positively and definitely you might get a uh, experience in genpact itself exactly. i hope that answer your question exactly and just adding to what rajiv says i think genpact has uh, you know a really good team of data scientists uh, you know within an organization because i interact with a lot of people in genpact i have conducted a couple of trainings for genpact on data visualizations and all that stuff okay and and i and i feel that they they are growing that team so uh, you know uh, no, by not leaving your job okay you will be able to capitalize on that additional Uh, uh you know kind of an opportunity which you can get it within the genpact in the data science right uh, rajiv i think you would also like to take the next question from pramod where he says that yeah. i'm stuck between a full stack mm-hmm. development and a data scientist how to choose wisely okay 
So Pramod, uh, as I told you earlier, if you remember that three circle, I call it concept of three leg. I told you that to become a good data science professional, you need to have three skill set. One is the programming, second one is the concept, and third one is about your industry knowledge. If you just looking for a role where you have to just develop, I mean, totally purely on technology based, then you can go ahead with stack development. But if you are interested in data, you like to play with the data or you want a overall kind of career where you can switch between today you are data scientist, tomorrow you can become solution architect, tomorrow you can become uh, pre-sales, then you can become another one. The opportunity is huge in data science because this is not only focused to a particular technology. So you are not taking uh, talking about a technology development or technology boom like SAP. It's about a data science. It's actually a science, it's not nothing to do with only technology. So I would say if you get into data science, you can lot of new opportunities would be open once you go to future. Right. That sounds good. Yeah. Madhvi, uh, is there an equal time dedication to all the topics and is it uh, is it topic on a is it based on a topic complexity? Yeah. So Madhvi, it's based on a topic complexity. Just to give you an example, let's say uh, if I talk about Mm, uh, certain concepts of, uh, of of exploratory data analysis in the first term versus certain concepts of let's say the database management system and all that stuff. Okay, so I think the exploratory data analysis is going to be more number of days compared to a database management because you actually need to know what a database management system is all about from a point of view of data scientist, but you need not to gain a mastery in it. Whereas in an exploratory data, you should have a master command or you should have a command in terms of how to explore and all that. So you're going to see the balancing done in each and every term based on the complexity of a, a topic and to be a certain extent based on whether that topic is going to be uh, useful for your data science purpose or not. Based on those, there's a variation in terms of the number of days which is being allocated for each and every topic. Uh, Ganesh says, I have got one year experience and now I'm risking my job to join the diploma for career betterment. I'm very much interested in data science in this reason too. Uh, I priority both. Uh, I have not been able to understand that is also let, about. Let me take that Amit. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, please. Yeah. So uh, Ganesh, <coughs> I explained to you, if you remember with only R and Python coding knowledge, with only R and Python coding knowledge, people are getting into this data field as a data analyst. But if you complete the whole course in this 11 month, as I explained, that you are not only learning about the data science, you are also learning about the data engineering. So which requires a lot of dedication and a lot of concept. But once you get out from this kind of course, where you have both the knowledge of the both world, then that would be unparalleled. So trust me, no need to worry about that you are risking your job. But if you learn all these things properly, you can handle big data on as well as you can build a predictive model on top of a big data, which is very niche. So your profile would be very niche and definitely you would get an opportunity either from a data engineering side or as a data science. So you have chosen the right career path and you are doing right course. No need to worry about it. Uh, you would get definitely a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, yes, Aparna, definitely we, we, we're going to share the recorded uh, version of this session so that you can just go through it later also. So I think I'll ask Vivek um, who is hosting this session in terms of sharing this recorded version with all the participants. So we're going to do that. Okay, I think uh, we are quite done. We are overshooted the time as well, but yes. that's good. We have very active participant today. So Amit, you can. Yeah, so uh, guys, in case if you have any queries or let's say down the line, making your decision in terms of coming for the data science program or not, you face any queries, you feel free to mail me on the email ID, which I'm pinging you right now in the chat box. Okay. Nepal global .com. So you can mail me. I'm going to send this to all the, that's my mail ID. I, I believe all of you can see that. That's my mail ID. I made dot at manipalglobal.com. And please do 
uh, you know, uh, whatever your queries, your doubts and all that stuff, you can mail it to me. I'll, I'll take a help from Rajiv in terms of answering all those questions and we'll make sure that you get a reply from us at least in next 24 hours from the time, you know, whenever you send the query to us, right? So on this note, uh, I'm again, sorry that I got delayed. I was stuck in another webinar, which took some time for me to wind off. Okay, and I really appreciate Rajiv, uh, your effort in terms of handling all the Q&As uh, from the product side, from the program side. Thanks a lot, Rajiv, for giving your, uh, uh, you know, uh, variable time on Saturday, on a weekend. Uh, so I really, I, I really appreciate that. And thank you guys. Thanks for your time. For all of you who has attended this webinar, thanks for your time in terms of taking time from your weekend and attending this informative sessions part of it. Please do reach out to me on my email ID and hope to see you guys some, you know, some of you soon in, in the campus. Hey, thanks for watching. Do like the video, share it and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Check out exclusive coupon codes for our YouTube learners in the description and visit moneypalprolearn.com to redeem it.